Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So today we're talking about those disgusting people that everyone hates to love or loves to hate. It is scammers, scammers, scammers everywhere. I'll tell you what, as long as there has been anything to buy or sell, there have been scammers trying to take advantage of people like you. And today we're gonna to talk about the top three things that you're gonna run into when buying sheep and goats when these people are trying to scam you. Stay tuned to find out more. All right, so a lot of what you're gonna run into is gonna be based off of pedigrees and paperwork and it doesn't necessarily mean that these people are outwardly trying to scam you uh, although most of them are what could be happening is basically people are running into an issue where they've been scammed themselves and they're trying to recuperate the money off of you but the first one that I want to talk with you about that you're gonna run into is the uh, the pedigree scam and what the pedigree scam is is where uh, you run into this especially a lot with goats. Uh, they're gonna tell you like, well, this goat is related to so-and-so, um, or this goat, it's always gonna be someone else. You're gonna walk in, you're gonna look at this goat, and you're gonna be like, yeah, that goat's okay. Um, you know, it's not anything special, but they're gonna be like, oh, no, 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 no. What you don't understand is that, you know, this goat is uh, his grandfather is so-and-so or his brother was the national champion last year or something like that and that's all fine and dandy but no one really cares all right now listen up have you ever heard of the goat spicy salsa pants mcgee well i got a deal for you this here goat is not spicy salsa pants he's not even his brother but this here goat is Spicy Salsa Pants McGee's grandson. And two years ago, his brother won the DeKalb County Fair. Didn't win it actually, but he got second place and he showed real strong. So, you know, he's got all kinds of potential. Uh, what you need to care about and the way to get over this is is you need to keep focusing on that animal just say well that's great that that you know that that animal's uh, grandfather was something special or that you know his brother won such and such last year or whatever but what I'm looking at right here is an animal that's mediocre do not let a salesperson sell you an animal based off of something that's not there. Do not let someone sell you an animal um, based off of, you know, who they're related to. Don't get hung up in that trap. And what you're gonna find in a lot of cases is, is this individual paid a whole lot of money to buy semen or to get bread off of someone that was famous and now they have a mediocre animal and they're trying to sell it to you for more than it's worth because they paid a whole lot of money and now they've got a junk animal that they can't get rid of. Okay, so what you need to understand here is I spent a lot of money uh, getting this animal bred and you know, I gotta make my money back. I, I paid like a thousand dollars or more having this dough bread. So, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna have to ask a lot because, you know, spicy salsa pants, uh, his, it, it cost me a lot of money, spicy salsa pants. Someone told them, oh, well, if you pay so much money to get this animal bred off of this buck, you're gonna end up with these babies that are worth a ton of money and now they've got this mediocre animal and they're trying to regurgitate this crap to you that they had told to them and sell it for more than it's worth. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and, and you can do that. Just again, focus on the animal. Don't worry about uh, who its mom or dad was or you know whatever. That animal has the potential that it has. Learn to look at animals, learn to read animals, and don't worry about who the parents were. Uh, we've had animals that have won and done very, very well that came from absolutely nothing. Uh, we've had other animals that quote unquote came from something special um, that were just garbage. So, you know, it, it, is, it is what it is. Do not pay 
based off of the lineage, pay off of the quality of the animal. With that being said, we need to keep that in mind as well when it comes down to pedigree and paperwork. All right, so that brings us to our next point that we need to talk about, and that is paperwork. Oh my word. You should be paying based off of the quality of the animal. If you go to talk to a producer and they're like, you know, it's they want some astronomical price for the animal and they're like, well, it's registered. Okay, well, what you need to understand is registration fee are are a lot and you know you know you got quality animal because this uh animal here is registered um so you know the registration fee you've got your um, annual membership fee the registration fee the dna testing fee my time um, actually you know when it comes down to it the registration's probably actually going to cost you more than the animal is nobody cares that the animal is registered for goodness sakes if you want to register the animal you pay for the registration fee again we're paying based off of the quality of the animal at hand no one cares if it's registered or if it's not i don't understand why people get sucked into this and get so hyperactive about registration for most people that are not showing animals and are not going to places that require registration registration is a scam it's a scam you are paying someone an absorbent amount of money you're basically throwing all of your profits to somebody somewhere to give you a piece of paper we've been over this before if you haven't seen our video about this check it out right here i literally have a file cabinet full, full of paperwork. I can register my poodle to be whatever it is that I want. Now people are gonna get huffy puffy about this and be like, oh, well DNA testing and all that. Sure, get sucked into that too. On top of paying for your registration paperwork, go ahead and pay for your DNA testing as well and see how much money you can spend. We're talking about annual dues, money for processing the paperwork, money for DNA tests. DNA tests, which by the way, can't even tell you how what percentage that animal is of, uh, you really get into this with boar goats. People are like, oh, it's a full blood, it's this blood, it's that blood. Again, if you're not showing the animal for purposes of you know where they require the paperwork where they require the documentation then don't worry about it and the dirty secret is is that most of these individuals have false paperwork that they're working with anyways a lot of times you can go to a large farm and they'll just ask you how do you want this animal registered what they mean is what do you want it to say what do you want the paperwork to say this animal is we see Dorsets that are being shown that are part Columbia, part Dorsets. We see Dorsets being shown that are part South Down, part Dorset. We see South Downs being shown that are, are you know, it, it is absolutely ridiculous. And as we showed in our video, we can even take a black faced sheep, breed it on a white faced sheep, and end up with an animal that we can show as a white face. It's, it's just insane. And when you go somewhere and someone tells you, Oh, well, you, you know, this animal is going to cost you three, four hundred dollars more because it's registered. That's that's BS. Most of the hard hitting, heavy producing farms in the United States that produce the best quality animals. When you go there, you are going to pick out your animal and you're going to say, that's the animal that I want. You're going to negotiate a price. And if you want it registered, they're going to charge you whatever the registration costs. So for instance, I believe Continental Dorset Club, um, if I want to register one of my Dorsets, I think it's like $35 or something like that. So if someone comes to my farm and they want to buy one of my Dorsets, I sell them the dorset based off of market price based off of what that animal looks like and if they want it registered i charge them what the registration costs that piece of paper does not make that animal better or worse quality it does nothing other than register them it is insane for me to charge that person more just because the animal comes with a piece of paper and i'm sure some of you are just going to lose your minds over this and that's okay um but what I'm telling you is, is basically that's the way that it works. So don't get caught up in that scam, which is our second biggest scam that we run into, which is, oh, they're registered, therefore they're better. Absolutely not. It's a scam. Stop falling for it.
All right, and the last one. <sighs> Please stop sending your money to people that do not bring you animals. I see this a lot. Some of the sweetest, nicest people I have ever met in sheep and goats have been ripped off and robbed by individuals that take their money, promising them some kind of animal. These individuals go online and they find someone that's selling this really cute animal or this really nice animal that they want to get started. And that individual immediately starts feeding you a line of poop and they are telling you, they're like, oh, well, um, you know, I can bring this animal to your farm and all I need is a deposit and just send me a little bit of money online. All right, so here's what you gotta do. Uh, we have super high demand for all of our animals. All you have to do is send us some money online um, and we will hold this animal for you and then at some point we will bring it to your house. Trust us, nothing to worry about. Look, if you're buying an animal, go to the farm where you're buying it and see the animal there. We've been over this before as well. You wanna see the mom, you wanna see the dad, if you can. Sometimes maybe the buck won't be there or the ram won't be there, um, but go to the farm, see where the animal's coming from, see what you're getting it from. If you call someone to buy an animal and they tell you, you absolutely cannot come to their farm to see it. That should be a huge warning sign. Huge warning sign. Um, what you'll run into a lot is they'll say, well, um, you know, I'm gonna be in your area delivering animals on such and such date. So to help you out, um, what I'll do is I'll just deliver them to your farm. All I need is for you to send me a small deposit or a large deposit into this online account. Um, and we'll hold it for you because we need a holding fee and uh, or a retainer fee. And then uh, we'll bring it by. And then, of course, you send them your money and you never see them. Look, if you're gonna buy an animal and it's not from a reputable breeder, um, you wanna to go to the farm. There are times, I mean, we've bought animals here that have came from Montana, that have came from all over the United States, but they're from very, very, very reputable farms that we know and everyone knows and it works out fine. Unless this individual has a very good track record and they have like a long history of selling animals, do not ever send someone money. We personally don't take deposits. I think deposits are, I, most people don't take deposits. It's you you know, you can get put on a waiting list um, sometimes, but taking people's money, that's that's not normal. Um, and if someone tells you you can't come to their farm to see the animals, chances are you're either gonna get your money completely just ripped away from you and you're gonna get nothing for it, or you're buying something that they've picked up at the sale barn or something weird that you just don't wanna deal with. So again, do not ever send money to someone go to the farm and see it for yourself. Unless, of course, this is a very reputable breeder that's very well established. I'm talking like website shows, you know, social media presence, like there is no doubt in your mind whatsoever that this individual is established. Um, if it's just someone off the street, don't ever send them money. Do not ever send them money. Do not ever send them money. <laughs> All right, so that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we've had some storms recently in the area. For those of you that are in the south or in the Midwest and have been affected by the tornadoes, we are thinking about you. We hope that you are safe and well. We're heading into the Christmas season. So Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of our viewers out there. If you don't follow us on social media, please check us out. Um, if you want to become part of our forum, we advise that you do so. It is Lanessa Farms Tack Box on uh, Facebook. That's again, Lanessa Farms Tack Box. Just do a search for that and you'll find it. Um, we have people from all over the world that are on there. It's pretty cool. And of course, if you want some feed, we are the feed connection for you. We sell everything from VFD feeds. Uh, that's the veterinary feeds like aramycin all the way to um, coccidiosis medications and other feeds that you can add simply on your farm. You can find out about that at foundationfeed.com. Again, I'm Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.